and welcome to Victor George Levygood's YouTube Knife Sheath School Volume 5. So today we are going to build this classic basic knife scabbard. It's a fold over taco uh, pouch sheath, whatever they are called today. That's what we're going to build. This one sheath will fit several different knives because of the uh, style of sheath. But the unique feature of this sheath is that it has a um, swivel effect backstrap. I'm gonna show you how to build that into this feature. It is something new I'm experimenting with. It's very nice to have that feature on a belt if you wanna shift the uh, sheath a little bit to draw. And um, anyway, we're gonna show you every step you need to build this yourself. So come along and uh, let's get started. Thank you. Let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at this uh, very basic pouch sheath. I did do a large basket weave stamp just to show you that you can do any geometric uh, pattern or carving. And um, this is basically the industry standard for many generations, just a fold over style sheath. Now I'm gonna spice it up on this particular build because I've always liked a dangler. I just think they're, they're more efficient and functionally better on a belt, but I wanted to incorporate a swivel effect um, instead of a dangler. And this is what I came up with, and this is what I'm gonna show you today. Basic leather skills are needed, but uh, I believe that just about any beginner can do this. I'm gonna show you step-by-step. Step. I'm gonna include tips and tricks um, that I've learned through the years, and uh, let's go ahead and build this. Let's quickly draw a pattern for this standard pouch sheet. So I did one here. Um, it's pretty much your typical looking pouch sheath. This one here has a rounded more effect than this particular pattern. Each pattern I do, it seems like it's a little different each time. But let me show you how I do that very, very quickly. So I take a standard eight by 11 inch piece of cardstock. I'll fold it in half and crease it. I'll draw a quarter of an inch um, to three eighths of an inch line, depending on the thickness of the leather. And that's what that uh, takes into consideration. So in this one here, I'm gonna use an eight to nine ounce leather. So a quarter inch line works just fine. Now you lay the knife um, up along that line, sort of center the spine on that edge and go ahead and trace out the blade onto that. Now, again, this is how I do it. So from the half guard here, I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna go one half inch up. So I'm going to use all my lines here that I can find to make sure that everything's even. So from this half guard, I'm gonna go half inch and I'm gonna just draw a straight line up to that. Now I'm going to take and draw a 3 8 inch welt on the edge of the blade. And again, this is however you want to do it. So I'll make it a little bit more pointed this time. I'll start at this angle here and I'll draw my reference lines at three eighths of an inch. You do this however you like. The measure and connect um, with a compass, however you like. Run out of ink, of course. And I'll get just to about there. That's good enough for me. Now I'm gonna have to do it facing me. I'm gonna take a, a French edger and somewhere in here, I'm gonna connect these two lines and um, we'll just do it like this here. Okay, it's pleasing enough to me. Now for the top, about halfway up the handle, I'm just gonna do a soft curve again this is for you to draw whatever you like. That's the pouch sheath that I'm gonna use for this knife. Now what I do is I open it up and I take from the crease line, from the edge of the sheath pattern, I'm gonna draw or cut up and from the tip, I'm gonna cut down. Now, as you can see here, it's a little bit wonky. And all I do, you can take a pen and clean that up. I just take my knife and come up here and then connect 
at the shadow lines and cut all my lines out. Try to split that ink line right at 90 degrees and cut out your pattern to the crease line. And now you have your basic pouch sheath. You can do this with any knife. You do this long enough, you're gonna start developing your own, what looks good to you as far as these patterns are concerned. And uh, let's try this again. And then just fold that into itself and trace it up. Okay, that is your pouch sheath. Now you take your time, make sure you split that line because this side here is a mirror image of the other side. And if you want them to mate up really nice, once you start putting this onto leather, you really want to take your time. I like using this utility knife because I can hold it up and I can see where the where the tip of the blade goes and I can split that line pretty easily. Okay. That looks good enough. I like this slice, nice little transition here, the little slight curvature. And uh, I think we'll go ahead and cut that out to leather. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have taken our pattern and uh, cut it to leather. Now, again, I am using a little bit lower grade Veg 10, um, eight to 10 ounce stock for these videos because um, these aren't for sale or they're not going out of my shop other than on this video. So cut these out the best you can. Again, the trick is use whatever knife you like. Make sure that you split that ink line all the way on both sides of the pattern. And then you'll have a perfect made up when it's time to do the final glue up. But anyway, uh, keep that knife 90 degrees. Cut out your sheath face. You'll need a strap. Um, for the um, swivel belt loop. And the one I use is about a quarter, an inch and a quarter. And it's about, just say nine inches. It can be any size you want. There is no rules in this. Um, so as you can tell, just whatever size you want. You gotta, you gotta work out the math on that one. So what I do is first of all, once I cut these patterns out, I'll take a salon board and I'll always just clean up my cuts um, normally I don't have too much cleanup to do you want that nice true 90 degree edge and if there's any little rough spots clean them up a little bit no harm no foul um, straps you shouldn't have to worry about once you get those of course what you want to do is on the sheath face itself from the corners here, this is where the welt's gonna be, so you're not too worried about that. But you're just gonna edge, whoop, edge the top of that sheath. Sometimes here at the very tip, I'll do the same thing because I may not be able to get to that too, too uh, closely. And like I always say, the better leather that you can use, the better your final product will be. So sand and edge everything flush. Once you have these uh, edged, then you'll wanna go ahead and burnish them. And uh, I always like having a bottle of water with a little bit of saddle soap um, mixed in and or ivory. I will always just sort of dampen. I like working with a damp leather and I'll dampen the edge here a little bit. And now, for those of you that remember, they used to sell these um, many, many years ago, probably in the 80s, and there's some kind of a plastic rod that have um, grooves cut in them. I really like the way these do edges. So with a damp edge, I'm just gonna go ahead and run that groove over there. Again, however you like. I don't know if you can see that, but it's already got a nice little sheen to it. Um, 
These, these plastic ones, for some reason, I, I think give me a better edge. I, I don't know. I have, I have a wooden one, but I always default to these. And then once you have that nice, smooth glass edge, um, you got a little bit of a lip roll there. I take my wing dividers at about 1 16th of an inch, and I'll just, this is nothing more than decorative effect. So gives you a nice little, nice little line there. All right, so now I have that. And um, then you, you do the same thing to this. Clean up all the edges. Um, eventually, all your burnished edges. I'll show you how we form this here in just a second. But just for sake of time, I'm not gonna edge or burnish these edges, but I'll show you how I do that in a minute. So now that I take that, I take the sheath face itself, and then I go three eighths of an inch on my wing dividers, and I will on the outside perimeter, make sure I'm in camera here, just give myself a border. So technically, all of this here is available for you to uh, use your geometric stamps, whatever it is that you want to do, your carving, and uh, I'll leave that blank canvas up to you. So that's what I do there. And um, then now let's work on the swivel strap. So we take our swivel strap, and again, I moisten it. For some reason, I like working with leather that's not cased, but just a little bit moist. And in this case, I am going to use a two inch belt loop stock and it's gonna be doubled. So I'm assuming this will be used by like a bush crafter. And then I take my leather and I fold it in half and I stick the belt loop in there. And then I will just press it together here on the edge and I'll give myself a little dot here of where the first stitch is going to be. Once I, once I have that and then I just take my um, little machinist square there and I will put another dot on the other side and I go an eighth of an inch And I give myself my stitch line. Okay, once I have my stitch line indicated, I will go ahead and mark my stitch holes, fold this together, and glue it from the stitch lines down and then you come up with this belt loop. So it's all set to go. Um, it rides really nice. There's no flop, no play. And uh, eventually that'll sit really nice. And of course the length here can be shortened. You can come a little bit closer. This is the swivel point on the back of the knife sheath. And uh, this is kind of what you're looking for. Again, it's a blank canvas. Decorate it however you like. All right, now, for the swivel itself is I take a one and a quarter inch, um, eight to 10 ounce piece of leather, and then I'll either use my one and a quarter inch round punch. If you don't have one of those, get a one and a quarter inch um, washer from the hardware store, and you can cut it out like that. To get the hole as centered as I can, I will use the washer, and that's where the center of the hole goes. And it's not that critical, but you know, I kind of like things symmetrical and centered. So do that, establish your stitch line, one eighth of an inch or so from the edge, and that is then ready to go. The only other thing that you'll need for this operation is a number nine copper rivet and burr and a one inch round uh, washer um, that fits all the way easily over that number nine copper rivet and burr. So once you have the, uh, the 
the leather round. So you'll notice there's a little bit of a recess in there. And the way I get that is I just take a little bit more of my moisture. I'll give it a quick spray. And then I take this universal eyelet setter and um, I place it onto the flesh side. And then I give it a good shot like that. And what that does is it gives it a little bit of a recess. And that copper ribbon and burr that sort of splays there at the base um, has a nice place to sit. And again, you want that flush up against the back and uh, you want it to be in there solid. You don't want it to fall out. All right, let's take it to the next step here. I'll prep for that and we'll be right back. Now we have our belt loop completed. I have uh, punched a hole that is snug for the size nine copper rivet. We don't want that to fall out. I like everything nice and snug. And uh, that is prepped and ready to go. Of course, prior to all of this, you can dye it. I usually airbrush them at the very end. Um, again, that's, uh, that's your option. So for ease of, uh, of this how-to, uh, I just leave them raw and natural at this point. So now I have my sheath face and uh, I'm gonna fold it into itself a little bit. And I wanna get an idea of where, cause we're gonna have a, a, a drain hole as part of this uh, pattern. And I've already indicated I want my stitch line to start right about there. And I center it in between this 3 8 inch line. And uh, then I just take my wing dividers and I'll do the best I can to center it from that spot. And again, this is going to be kind of a one size fits a lot of knife sheaths or knives. And then I'll mark my, um, uh, my stitch line. So now I just do nothing more than take my number five millimeter um, stitch iron from Maker's Leather Supply. These are nice, They're, you get three or four, three or four of these. And um, you know, for 50, 60 bucks, it's actually a, a nice little. And then I just give myself, I don't punch all the way through. All I'm doing is giving myself my stitch spacing. For those that remember the overstitch wheel, those days are over. Anyway, and then of course at the curves, you gotta use a little two, a two piece one here, a two teeth one. You wanna make sure that they're on the lines. That's off just a little bit, so we'll go a couple more with the two. And again, I'm not going all the way through them. Of course, this is indicative of a hand-sewn sheath. And if you sew them on a machine, you would obviously not do this step. So I'm pretty close to that. And now I have my stitch lines indicated. So on this other sheet that I have in progress, I've done that. Um, all the edges have been dyed and burnished. And um, again, that is for you to do. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to fold this together. And I'm going to incorporate something here that I learned probably, I don't know, 40 years ago from Chris Kravitz from Tree Stump Leather. And all it is is basically a block of wood. This is two, two four by fours glued together. It uh, gives me a little bit of place to set. I don't know if you can see that. Gives me a little bit of a place to set the folded sheath on there. I can work on it. Of course, you can put this on the edge of your bench and do the same thing. But the nice thing about this is it moves, gives you a, 
you know, complete 360 um, angle on what you're doing. So now what I want to do is I want to sort of establish, I know the stitch line is going to be right here in between this, this 3 8 inch welt. So I want to, I want to determine where my belt loop is going to go. And, um, you know, it really depends. Well, obviously you need a little space for this, <laughs> this round piece to be sewn on here, but I'm just going to give myself that, that probably, that probably looks pretty good. And it's centered on the back piece. I got plenty of room here for the stitching and I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to give myself a uh, mark there. Now, the nice thing too about this, uh, this little block of wood here is, you know, you can carve on it. Okay. So you can just imagine the possibilities of that benefit. All right. So now that I have that, um, all I have to do now is I have to take my leather piece, which of course, again, is burnished, dyed, however you want it. And then you're going to match that hole there. And then when we come back, that's going to be sewn down. So before we can sew this um, down, we need to glue it down. And what I'm gonna do now is just place it on there and then give myself, um, you really need to go every other hole and just give yourself a little mark. Okay, that is where you're gonna glue. I just take my little awl here. And I scratch it up. I'm going to take my glue. And then I'm going to place the number nine copper rivet in there. And I'm going to glue all of this to the sheath face. And it's going to look like that. Completely sewn on. And um, when I come back, that's what it'll be. As with anything contact cemented, you should always take a convex hammer and uh, help tack that down. So now we have that glued into position and the number nine copper rivet is in place. And you can do however you want to to sew this. You can um, uh, Dremel drill press that with a 1 16th inch bit. You can use a yoga block here and um, an awl and um, just hold the angle of your, and then punch your holes with this. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that off camera. However you wanna do that, um, this is your call as far as sewing that. Um, it would be a little difficult on a machine, but can be done your call I'm going to go ahead and finish and sew. On a previous comment, somebody wanted to know how I lace my thread and needle. So I use one aught C.S. Osborne harness egg eye needles. These things I've had for like 40 years and they never break. They'll bend, but they don't break. And then I just run my thread through that. It's one aught Ritza or any braided main thread etc. And I run it through about three, four inches. And then I just take the, the uh, needle and I run it through the tail end like this. And I'll split that thread right down the middle. And then once I have that, I run it up like that. And then I just take this, pull it through, take the running end and match it up. And that's all you need for braided thread and uh, that'll hold throughout your whole project. Okay, so once that piece is sewn on there, you want to tack it down, and we'll do a little fit test here, and eventually that's going to go. I'll show you the steps for that, but I think we are completely all systems go. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and prepare our welt. I'll show you how I do that. Um, I have went ahead and pre-punched my holes 
You can do that with your number five uh, millimeter stitching iron. You can do it with the yoga block and all, or you can use your Dremel drill press. So, and uh, these, I sort of consider these kind of like pilot holes because once I glue and, uh, and uh, sew this seam together, um, instead of having to go through, uh, I'm not sure, um, almost a half an inch of welt and sheath, uh, the pilot holes will help your awl, will help your uh, Dremel drill press if that's what you're gonna use. And of course, if you're gonna sew it by machine, that's something that you already know how to do. All right, so I'm gonna take my sheath face, I'm gonna get my piece of scrap um, welting, and I'm gonna lay it down here and I want to lay it on the sheath or on the uh, welting stock like I've already previously drawn here, but I just run that along the edge and I trace that out like that. Okay, once you have that, um, then I'm gonna take my moisture and I'm gonna let that color out for just a minute. I'm gonna take my welt and I'm gonna go, um, so one hair past 3 eighths of an inch, and um, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna follow that incline, and I'm gonna give myself, using these wing dividers, my welt. Now we're putting a little bit excess there. I'm gonna take some of that off. And uh, now all I have to do is cut out my welt. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this backside here um, to help me glue it in, but I'm just gonna cut the inside of the welt out. And again, this is not specific to this knife. It will fit this knife, but if you have similar knives, it'll fit those as well. And in volume six, we'll show you the camlock welt, which is specific to one knife only. And, and I think for volume six, I'm gonna do it for this beautiful Buck Skinner that I just got. So stay tuned for volume six. I'm looking forward to building that one. All right, now I have my welt material, and um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this corner here. You don't want that little corner sticking out there. So let's take that thing off, and I'm going to set that on there and make myself a little mark here, and that's where this is gonna be cut off. Okay, so now I have my welt, I'm going to go ahead and use my wing dividers again, and I'm going to indicate a glue line on both sides. So then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to rough this up. Use any kind of scratcher you want. And again, take your time, um, do all your dyeing. You can dye the inside of this, uh, this welt that looks nice. And um, again, I'm just showing you the steps, not necessarily taking um, every detail into consideration. So that's on you. All right, I'm gonna glue the welt and I'm gonna glue it to the face, to the front of the sheath. And uh, once we do that, I'll show you the next step. And uh, we're moving right along here towards the uh, finale. All right, so we glued the welt on and it's all set to be trimmed off. And I'm gonna do that right now before we punch our holes. Keep that knife right along the edge, 90 degrees.
and we are all set. All right, now I'm gonna glue the main seam together and um, I'll show you, um, again, you can use your awl, you can punch through that with your stitching irons and I'm gonna show you um, a drill press method and um, how you can um, drill the holes 90 degrees while still having this on the back that's kind of obtrusive. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and glue the main seam together. Two coats, contact cement, and I'll be back. Crisis averted. I almost glued the seams uh, before I set the uh, loop in. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our number nine copper rivet encased in its round leather. We're going to place this on there nice and firm. Oh, forgot. We're gonna set our washer in between that first, and then we're gonna set our copper rivet. This is the number one copper rivet setter. Uh, I get these, or you can get these at buckleguy.com. Okay, and just smash that down. Take your clip clippers and hammer it down a little bit. Take your number two copper rivet setter and pin that head. Okay, that washer there prevents it from locking, so to speak. And peen that down and you have your swivel. Okay, so now, <laughs> now that we have that in there, and as you can see, that's a lot of excess. Um, I, I, oh, what just happened there? Standby. Okay, we are all set now to glue the main seam together. Um, that dark spot there is just from hammering the rivet head. Of course, it is protected by that piece. And we are now ready to push this together. So we're just gonna match up that seam. And if you cut your pattern correctly, It'll all match up really, really nice. And we're gonna go ahead and secure that with some clamps. And it'll be ready to sew. I'll show you a trick to sew with this in the way, and um, or at least with a Dremel. And um, then we're just about done. Ready for finishing, and uh, we'll have our Swivel sheath ready. So we went ahead and glued the main seam. Everything has gone good according to the pattern. And we're ready to, in this particular case, I'm gonna show you um, the use of the Dremel drill press. The block that you see right here, um, there was a fella that I knew in um, Fairbanks, Alaska. His name was Jim Dick a great knife maker. Unfortunately, he has left us. Um, but anyway, he came up with this idea for me anyway, this first time I'd seen it. But the purpose of this is when you're sewing sheaths on a drill press and you need some place for the, um, the back strap to lay flat. And then that way, when you're drilling out your holes, The strap is out of the way. So let's drill a few. Keep this thing flat up against that wood.
So we started sewing the sheath, and because all the stress is going to be right up in this section here, we want to do a two back tack start and then move your way down. So I don't set a groove in my stitches. Um, I find that if I lightly case the vegetable tan leather and with the strong um, braided thread of today, you can pull that and it's literally uh, flush with the surface. So I don't groove. Anyway, I sew away from myself and, um, you know, just uh, sew it however you like. And um, I'll do a couple more stitches here. And then we shall finish this up. I will show you all of the mistakes um, that I made on this sheath. There are a couple of them, um, but all in all, my goal here is to at least show you um, the basics of making a sheath, or at least the way I make a sheath. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off now and uh, finish sewing this and we'll get back to you. We have the uh, basic sheath completed. We have the swivel effect in um, process. We have the edges now that we need to true up. I use a 60 grip flat wheel sander and I'm just gonna hit it um, a little bit with this just to true everything up. Takes a lot of leather off without a lot of effort. And um, as you can see, it, uh, it doesn't take much to true it up. So we're, we're on track. And I have a tendency to get a little heavy handed, which causes the leather to burn. So I have to be cautious of that. So I'm doing okay now. Get that out of the way. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to a 150 grit wheel and then I'm gonna hand sand this smooth and the next operation will be to do the edging and uh, moisten it and place the knife in there and we are just about I've taken the edge to uh, about 600. Um, I could probably do more, but for this demonstration, that'll suffice. So now I'm gonna take a large edger and I'm gonna go ahead and take off, take off that sharp corner. And when you come up to the tip like this, you can just walk it around. Backside. Okay. All right, well, thank you for sticking around. Uh, I'm finished. We went ahead and took the edge to 600 grit and uh, finished it. There's been no dye applied, no oil, no finish, no um, anything yet. It's done in its, its raw state. So as you can see, the only thing I did on this plain sheath is I did some decorative lines with a wing divider and, um, and uh, that sort of dresses it up a little bit. The stitches are nice and tight and uh, She'll fit a couple of different knives. As you can see here, I use the same knife and, and uh, built two different patterns from it, and they're slightly different. I do like the shape of this one, so I'll um, probably replicate this in uh, future sheaths. And uh, I do like the swivel effect. Um, only time will tell. This is something new that I've been experimenting with, but a high and tight sheath sometimes is very awkward on the belt, so that'll help alleviate um, drawing and reholstering. Enjoyed. Thanks for coming along. Let's uh, come back for volume six, where we'll do the same style with a cam lock welt, and uh, we'll press on from there. Thank you.